Good evening. It is lovely to welcome you to Questions of Life. As always, I'm Kath. I'm here with Donald. Hello. We're joined by Shrade. We're at Sutton Coldfield Baptist Church. But sadly, we are not live to you this evening. Tonight is one of those sessions where you're unable to ask your questions and to contact us directly. And it's a bit of a shame because tonight's topic is all about questions. Mm. And it's all about whether it is okay to ask God any questions. We'll be back live in a couple of weeks, but for the next two weeks, we're going to do these pre-records, which we hope you will find just as helpful. So Donald, we're talking about questions tonight. And the average person, if they have a question that they want answering, they'll go to Google. I mean, we all do that. You're trying to work out how to spell something or what on earth is that? Mm. Quickly type it in. If Google can't tell you, then people will talk to maybe family or to friends. If family and friends can't tell them, there seems to be this point at which people begin to think, where can I go with my question? Now, if it's a, a just a little nonny kind of question, they're not so bothered. But if it's something that's maybe a little bit more emotional, a little bit deeper, something to do with life and its meaning, they begin to think about, well, where can I take that question? And then kind of God comes into the equation. Is there a God? Can I ask God this question? Is it okay to begin to question God? And so as we explore this question, can we question God? Uh, and, and how do we do that? I've got a little quiz for you. Oh now, no. we had a quiz uh, okay. some months ago, and you did all right in it, actually. Mm -hmm. I like my little quiz. Now, this is all about the Bible and questions. <laughs> Not a quiz all about the Bible. Questions <laughs> in the Bible. Now, you're, you're a minister of religion, so I have every faith that you're going to do well in this. So this okay. is questions about questions. Okay. Your first question is this. How many questions do you think are asked in the Bible, whether that's asking God, someone else, or God, or Jesus asking somebody else. Oh, so loads, loads, loads. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go a thousand. Okay, it's over 3,300. Okay. What do you think is the very first question that is asked in the Bible? The very first question in the Bible has got to be, did he really say that? Yes, it oh. is. It is. So that's the devil talking to Adam and Eve. Adam yep. and Eve have been told that yep. they can eat the fruit from anywhere in the garden apart from one tree. Yep. And if you eat of it, you will die. And the devil comes up to them and says, did God really say that? Will you surely die? Very good knowledge. My life. Okay, question number three. So you've got 50% right so far. Okay. Question number three. What is the first question that God asks in the Bible? Uh, so... Mm, uh, that's going to be where are you? It is where are you? And what's the context? Uh, that's because Adam and Eve are hiding from him because they feel ashamed because they ate from the f fruit of the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. And just to clear it up, God does know where they are, but he's asking a question just to start a conversation yeah. with them. So it's not like, oh, where could they be? Yeah. But he's just starting a conversation. Okay, your final question is true or false? Okay. You've got a 50% chance yeah. of getting this right. I'm going to read you a statement. Is this true or false? There are over 80 instances in the Gospels where people brought questions to Jesus. Now, did Jesus spend more time asking and answering questions than he did preaching? Is that true or false? That would be true. It is true. You, a minister of religion, have got 100% <laughs> no, in I, our, I our won questions wrong. quiz. What did you get wrong? No, First one, Google one. Uh, you got the number wrong. Oh, what, what? That's not I bad. I got the Bible stuff right. You got the Bible stuff I right. I just didn't know Google. 75%. So that's good. So mm. you are qualified to begin to talk about questioning God. And so as I've said, people have lots of different questions. Fundamentally, let's go straight in there. Is it okay to question God? I would say beyond okay, I think it's really important to bring our questions to God I think there are lots of different kinds of questions and that's what we need to unpack. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, it's really important to be honest with God and we've talked about that in previous questions of life, but it is really important where we have questions to bring them to God and to uh, be honest with him about the things that we're worried about, the things that we don't understand, the things that we want to check out and the things that we're unsure about. So it's really important to be able to do that. I think. It all, the, the different kinds of questions require different kinds of conversations with God. Mm -hmm. Before we get into those different kind of questions and those different kind of conversations, what do you think stops people from asking God questions? I guess for some people it's a fear that it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, I think that's a very unhelpful perception of God. Um, that He wants us to be honest with him. And that's not disrespect. That's actually a sign of respect that you feel that you can be truthful and uh, reveal what you're really feeling with someone. So I think some people feel that it's disrespectful. I think some people are hung up about the notion that they may be doubting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another big issue we really need to talk about. Uh, some of the unhelpful perceptions of what doubt is and whether doubt is or isn't a good thing and whether it isn't, isn't allowed. Mm -hmm. And so I think some people don't ask questions because they're trying to hide doubt. They're trying to yeah. deny to themselves that they feel those things. And I guess that's a third area where people don't question is sometimes the questioning of God is bringing out into the open fears or anxieties or doubts that a person is wanting to suppress and not mm -hmm. face. So sometimes it's not that we don't want to ask God, it's that we don't want to think about these mm -hmm. issues. So we, we bury them, we hide them, and we pretend everything's fine, everything's great, mm -hmm. we're full of faith because we're frightened of the, the emotions or the answers sometimes of mm -hmm. what questioning might mean. Mm -hmm. And I guess that leads on to the fourth area, which is that we're frightened of the answer. And sometimes mm -hmm. we don't question God because we're fearful that he will say something that we don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. It may be that what we fear is, is unfounded. In other words, I think sometimes people fear that God will reject us. He will fear that he will condemn us. We fear that he will... Um, turn his back on us or leave us and that's an unfounded fear mm. sometimes I think the fear is that he will say no you can't do this you need mm. to change this stop doing that mm. and so because some people don't want that answer they don't ask questions now it may be that, that isn't the answer that, that God is going to give or it might be that that is the answer but if it is the answer it will be for our own good and yeah. for our own benefit yeah Bottom line then is it's really good to ask God questions. I think sometimes we get into our heads that actually if you are a, <laughs> excuse my words, a mature Christian, then you get to the point of understanding everything. You don't need to question God and it's all okay. And, and for some people, they think that that's the place that you've got to get to. But mm. actually, I would say that maturity means that uh, you have the confidence to question and to not think that I know it all, I have all the answers and to not have that relationship with God where you can talk these yeah. things through. Yeah. And at different times in our lives, there'll be different questions. So sometimes life is quite straightforward uh, and we read the Bible and we get a lot of the answers to the things that are going on in life. And we don't necessarily need to come to God with such a burning question. And so we think it's okay. But then at other times, things may go wrong or there may be a big um, decision that we need to make, one of those moments. And it's in those times then that we begin to talk these things through. So in the Bible, there are lots of different people, lots of different situations that they have. One of the ones that I love is David. David uh, messes up. <laughs> God still loves him. David, David finds himself in situations where he is fearful for his life, where he's struggling. And in the midst of those struggles, we see very raw emotion. We see him kind of crying out to God, God, where are you? What, what, what are you doing? And I suppose one of the fundamental questions we ask is, God, where are you? Um, we just can't see him. We can't feel him. And that ties in a little bit to the doubt. Are you really there, God? Do you really love me? Do you really exist do you want mm. to just unpick and explore that whole area just a little bit so i think that area of of, of questioning what god is doing mm. or where he is and expressing our fears and expressing yeah. our doubts is really important thing to do it's very important to express fear fear is is far uh, less when it's vocalized mm. and it and it can be dealt with more easily when it's acknowledged and Recognized. So I think to come to God and say, where are you? What mm -hmm. are you doing? It is an important thing if that's the emotion that we're feeling. Yeah. Um, so I think being honest with God in that sense is, is really good. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, so, so I think there are different questions that, that arise around that area. So sometimes what we're really questioning 
is ourselves. So we don't feel good enough or we mm -hmm. don't feel we're getting it right. Mm -hmm. And so we're asking God, in a sense, do you still love me? Yeah. And I think that's a good question to ask God if it's what we feel. Mm -hmm. And the answer will always be yes. Mm -hmm. And then, so then there's a part of, of, of trying to hear the answer, which is coming from scripture. Yeah. And uh, so a question that's based in what we're feeling, it's important to express that, but it's an important to try and search the scriptures for the answers. Mm -hmm. That leads on to a second kind of question, which might be around the area of, is your word true? Yeah. So if I'm reading that nothing can ever separate me from the love of God, mm -hmm. and I start to say, God, if, is that really true? Mm -hmm. That kind of question, although it's good to acknowledge and it's good to express, we do come to a point where we have to decide, mm -hmm. actually, I'm going to choose to believe Scripture. Yeah. And so there comes a point with those questions where God says, the answer is this, you now have to make a decision as to whether you believe that or not. Mm. Sometimes our questioning goes beyond that with scripture where we're saying, God, do you really expect this of me? Do I really have to tell the truth? Do I mm. really have to be, do I really have to forgive somebody? Mm. And again, it's good to express those questions. Mm. But the answer will come back. It's a question of trusting me on this. Yeah. So sometimes the answer to a question is, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. trust me, mm -hmm. trust me. But if we go in a different direction, there's a another whole set of questions which we may not easily know the answer to, which are along the lines of, what are you doing, God? Mm -hmm. What is happening? Why has this happened? Yeah. And again, I think it's really important to vocalize that question. If you get, you get that a lot in the, in the Bible, people like Job, and in a sense, that's what David is saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's, he's vocalizing, why is this happening? What we do discover in the Bible is that often that question isn't answered. But in asking the question, we meet with God. And one of the things you notice with Jesus when he's asked questions, he doesn't necessarily ask, answer the question that's asked, but he does lead people into a deeper relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the question, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. In fact, I guess I'll go beyond sometimes, most of the time, the question, why is this happening, is never answered. And so sometimes we have to uh, make a note of it and say, when I get to heaven, God, I'm <laughs> going to ask you. Yeah. Because a lot mm -hmm. of the time, we don't know the answer. And w but, w mm -hmm. but in asking the question, we help get help mm -hmm. to move forward. So it's as if God mm -hmm. says, I'm, I'm not, I can't answer that question for you, but here what, here's what we what I can say that's going to help you move forward. Yeah. And very often it goes like this, that we ask God, why is this happening? And he says, uh, I'm not going to answer that, but I'm going to tell you what we do now. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about what's the next step. Yeah. So, that's a, so it's important to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Another whole realm of questions which are important to ask is, what do I do, God? Mm. What, what shall I do in this situation? Mm. And that's vital to ask God and to be constantly listening to the prompts of his spirit. Mm. And we've done a whole session on questions of life about hearing God. So sometimes yeah. the answer is, is based in scripture. Sometimes the answer is learning to recognize how God speaks through our thoughts. Sometimes the answer comes through learning to speak, see how God speaks through our opportunities. Mm. Sometimes it's learning how God speaks through others. Mm. But it is a really vital question to say yeah. to God, what shall I do? In fact, I would say that's a question to ask every day. Mm -hmm. It's a question to ask regularly of our lives. Am I doing the right thing with my mm -hmm. life? And just to listen. Sometimes the answers need time. Mm -hmm. We need a few days, weeks. Sometimes with the big questions, am I doing the right thing with my life? That's a few months to get the answer. Mm -hmm. So we, so we talked about asking questions about what's happening. We were talking about asking questions that express our fears. We've talked about asking what we should do. We've talked about asking whether the Bible is really true. Yeah. And I guess a fifth big area that it's important to ask God on is, uh, am I hearing you right? Mm. Have I understood this correctly? Am I doing the right thing? Mm. And again, I think that's a vital question. Just mm. to constantly be... 
uh, in humility saying, have I understood mm. what your spirit is saying to me? Mm. Um, and I think that if you get to a place where you say, I don't question any longer, that's a very dangerous place. Mm. We need to be constantly saying, did I hear that? And, mm. and to hold lightly what we think mm. uh, God has said uh, internally to us and to mm. say, well, I'm, I'm just going to weigh that. I'm going to check that with others. I'm going to ask him again. If that's what you're saying, repeat it in a different format. Because I think the big things that God says, he repeats. There'll be a scripture. There'll be a word from somebody else. There'll be a mm. circumstance. So therefore, it's really important to say, have I heard this correctly? Mm. So those are five, there may be more areas to question. And, mm. and each of those kind of questions are different and they, yeah. th there's a different value to them and a different response from God, but that it's all important to do. And holding something back is, 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 is negative. So those were, I can't think I get them right. It was questioning what we should do, questioning whether we've heard correctly, questioning whether scripture is saying the right thing and that's the one where he's not going to change his mind <laughs> questioning mm. our feelings and questioning what is going on in our life mm -hmm. i always think there's two different approaches as to whether you already have a relationship with god and if you don't mm. so if you don't it's harder than to go to scripture and some of the things that you said uh, but it's something that we would encourage and to continue to come to God and to say, God, would you speak to me? Would you provide someone else to help me yeah. to answer these questions? There are lots yeah. of different resources. Yeah. I think if someone already has a relationship with God, I think back to my life, and I think I'm quite an emotional person. I'm quite a feelings-driven person. And I remember when I had glandular fever and, and it turned into post-viral fatigue and I had no energy, I couldn't do anything and I had to continually go to the doctors for blood tests, for checkups, for all of these things and I could barely function, I could barely walk and there was this sense of, like, I just can't cope, where are you God? Why are you letting me go through this? And one of the things I decided to do was to take my emotions out of the equation and to think, okay, I'm feeling all of these things partly because I'm ill, partly because I'm fed up partly because of everything that's going on, I need to have some place of objectivity. And so what I did, I got one of those card index file things. And on each card, I went through the Psalms and I wrote on it a, a different promise or characteristic of God that was found in the Psalms. And I decided that I was going to learn two or three of these every week so that when I was in a situation where I felt I've got no energy, I can't cope, my question is, God, it wants to be, where are you, what are you doing? I'd sit there and I would bring to mind two or three of these scriptures and I would say to myself, okay, I may not feel it because of everything else that's going on, mm -hmm. but I'm going to believe that yeah. what the Bible says is true. Uh, and my emotions are good at times, but at other times they, they can be really crippling and really unhelpful and I can't feel you there, God. But I needed something that wasn't based on my emotions, wasn't based on my circumstances. And so I suppose my encouragement is for some people that are in that situation, where are you, God, is to go back to what Scripture says, to go back to building this picture of who God is. And when we begin to understand who God is and what his word says about him, we begin to realize that we are loved irrespective of what we've done or how we feel that it's not about our perceptions but we go back to to the plumb line as, yeah. as we talk about yeah. to that objective truth and I've always found that really really helpful mm. and I remember just a couple of months ago I did my back in and I remember I was in agony and I was again I'm emotional mm. so I'm like god where are you why have you done this again I'm gonna have to have an operation I just lost it and I had to get to a point of now I've got to get back to some place of my emotions not taking over and me not doubting and sending all these questions out to God, but me finding a place of this is just where I'm at, but God is with me. And so I put on, this was in the middle of the night, I put on some worship music. Uh, and at first I just cried and was just like, really, this is just awful. And as the music and the words just began to flow through me, I began to sing along a little bit. And this, this kind of pain didn't go away, but I felt more peaceful. Uh, and I shared this at a live stream, but I had a teddy with me. And I symbolically took hold of the paw of my teddy mm. to say, I believe that you're here with me. Th this is me symbolically saying, you're here 
even though I can't feel it or see it, and I have all these doubts and all of these questions. So I suppose what I'm saying is, you know, talking about what, what you've been talking about is that a really good starting place is a really good understanding of the objective truth. Mm. It is the word of God is going to that. I don't know whether you have questions. I don't know how you, how mm. you deal with them. Yeah, I have questions all the time. I think that, that my experience is, goes back to your Google thing that, you know, where, where do we look for advice? And about uh, 35 years ago, I was studying theology, I was questioning the Bible and everything, and I came to a point over maybe a couple of months of really thinking through, do I believe the Bible? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm, I've probably talked about this already, but I came to a rational decision that I didn't trust human beings' opinions. I looked at, I looked at <laughs> our world, I looked at global warming, I looked at, at that time, I looked at the nuclear threat mm-hmm. and whether we were going to blow the planet up, I looked at the fact that we'd had the Holocaust, I looked at the mm-hmm. fact that there was famine all over the world, I think it was around the time of Bob Geldof from Live Aid, and you know, I looked at what mankind's greatest brains were able to achieve and I thought, I don't trust mm-hmm. the wisdom uh, of man. So I've got two choices. I trust this book that has survived for 2,000 years and on people have based their life. And I trust the idea that there is a God and he wouldn't have let it be wrong. Mm. Or I trust these voices that are saying we don't believe this part of it or that part of it or it's far-fetched. And these are the voices of the people who are like me, of human beings. Mm. And the more you go on the internet to find answers, I think the more, to me, become convinced of the ignorance of human beings that we Mm. don't really know we couldn't Mm. you know the whole covid thing we don't really know so Mm. i made a choice 35 years ago that i would trust the bible Mm. i made a choice Mm. and over time that choice has helped me in the sense of i am convinced of god's love absolutely convinced so for me i don't think i've questioned whether god loves me yeah uh for years because I've spent my life reading the Bible and Mm. being convinced of what it says. Mm. Where I question is, have I got it right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Am I doing the right thing? That's Mm. a huge question for me all the time. Have I heard you correctly? Mm. Am I I doing what you want, God? And Mm. I think those are healthy questions. There comes a point sometimes with me where I go too far Mm -hmm. and I suspect God is saying, enough of the questions, (laughs) do it. Yeah. Um, but it is, it, it is who I am, and I know that God is quite okay with me constantly questioning, mm. as long as sooner or later there's some action. <laughs> and I do think that sometimes he says, just do something, don't yeah. keep questioning it. Yeah. So my questions are always around, am I doing the right thing? Mm. Have I heard God correctly? Um, I, again, I don't tend to question, what are you doing, God? Mm. And again, I think it's just because I've lived with Scripture so long that I, I, I don't know why, but I don't tend to feel... I just think uh, it's a pointless question. Mm. He's not going to answer it, mm-hmm. and it's not going to get me anywhere. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. I, I don't know quite why I'm that mentally self-disciplined, mm. but I tend to think, well, what should I do now? Mm. But when something goes wrong, it's not, I do cry out to God and mm. I do express my emotion and my pain and my sadness. And mm. I will say, God, what's going on? But I don't genuinely think, tell me the answer. Mm. It's more an expression of the feeling that, that needs to come out. So and I th- I th- the only thing I can put that down to is just having lived with the Bible for so long yeah. that it has changed me. Mm. It has changed me. So I, I don't tend to doubt that he loves me and I don't tend to ask what on earth he's doing. Mm. There are times when I don't like what I think he's doing and I'll question, why do we have to do this? Mm. But um, yeah, most of my questions are around, am I doing the right thing? So you just talked about expressing your emotions, uh, which is good because we need to do that and, yeah. and people express their emotions in their questions yeah. as well. Do we have to be polite to God when we're, we're questioning him and what's going on and expressing our emotions? Do we have to, you know, treat him with awe and respect because he is the great I am? Uh, how, how free and honest and real can we be? I think we have to be real and honest. Um, I think 
It depends what you mean by respect. Mm -hmm. uh, I think God can cope with my anger. Mm -hmm. And I think he wants to take my anger rather than me inflict it on mm -hmm. people I live with. <laughs> or rather I internalize it. So I think yeah. God wants to hear my anger. Yeah. I think he wants to receive that, even if that's vocalized towards him, even mm -hmm. if I'm blaming him. And normally if I blame God within a few minutes, I've turned, changed my mind. But at least, it, it, because as I express yeah. it, I, yeah. I, I change my mind. So I don't think expressing anger is disrespect. I think if I was to say to other people, make fun of God, mm that would be a, a, a line I would feel shouldn't be crossed. Yeah. And I wouldn't go that far in disrespect. So I might say to God, my God, what on earth are you doing? Yeah. But I would feel it's disrespectful, irreverent and wrong for me to say to a load of other people, I don't know what God's doing, I think he's an idiot. Mm. Mm. I think that to speak badly of God to others Mm. It's a line I don't mm. want to cross. I mean, this is another old subject, but the, 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 mm. the Bible talks about reverence and it, yep. and it uses the word fear, yep. which we can misunderstand. When God is not unpredictable. We're not to be afraid that God will suddenly do something we don't expect. But I do think we should have a fear of um, mistreating him. Mm. I don't think me being honest with him is mistreating him, but mm -hmm. I do think the way I speak about him to others, mm -hmm. and then you get into the whole realm of blasphemy mm -hmm. and all of that stuff, that I think we should be fearful of. So I don't think me being angry with God is blasphemy. Mm -hmm. I think if I express things to other people that are, that, that are, are, are hurtful towards God, I'm in a place I don't want to be. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically what we're saying is it's okay to be real. It's okay to be angry. It's, it's okay important to cry. To do it. It, I like what you said, that it's better that I give it to God and he takes it from me rather than I carry it and express it to other people. I think that's really key. Otherwise, we, we carry this stuff around with us and it's not fair on other people to have to carry yeah. that and to take that on board. But God is big enough to put up with my little rant yeah. uh, and my just rawness of emotion uh, and meet us in that place and yeah. begin to help us to process it and lay it down and to move on. He wants that. He encourages that. It's yeah. like, come to me because he's the only one that, yeah. that can, can do that with us. I just want to put a little caveat to what I just said. As a strong and mature Christian, I can cope, and I don't think it's disrespectful, if, an, if a member of the church comes to me and says, I'm really angry with God, and they yep. express it to me, and together we take that to God. Yep. That, I don't think, is a problem. Yep. Where it's a problem is if I damage somebody else's faith yes. by blaming, criticizing, and saying, mocking God or ridiculing mm. God, and I think that's a line mm. we shouldn't cross. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want people to feel they can't be honest with me. Yeah. Uh, but I think we need to be careful who we're honest with. Yep, I think that's really true. So if we have these questions, is it possible for us to have a conversation with God about them? Can we change what's happening? Can we change God's mind? Or is it just a fait accompli where we just come and say, this is happening, just help me? I used to say that we could change God's mind and, and people got very, uh, uh, rightly would come back at me. And I, I will use a different phrase now. So okay. people are going to say Donald's changed his mind. <laughs> I haven't changed my mind. I don't think we change God's mind, but I do think we change God's outcome. Okay. Because he's chosen that we, he will have one outcome if we do this and another outcome if we do that. Mm -hmm. So when we plead with God, this is a whole area of prayer. When we plead with God to do something, it's not that we change his mind, but we do change what he does mm -hmm. because he decided that if they want this enough, I will do it. Yep. And if they don't want it enough, I won't. Yep. So his mind doesn't change, but his outcome changes. So uh, it's really important to plead with God. It's really important to express our hunger for something. Uh, our, our desperation for something. Mm -hmm. 
because that does change a spiritual atmosphere. That does change what's going on. When we say to God, Lord, and there's examples of that with Abraham, with Moses, yeah. where uh, they, it looks like they're bargaining with God, but actually I think God has set the bar here and he says, when they get to there, then I'll change my action. Yeah. Right, miraculously, we've had a question in, and it's from one of our audio-visual team. Oh, right. Okay, yes. Uh, and it's on my watch here. Okay. When God doesn't answer a question, should we keep on asking and looking in other places or stop asking, assuming it's a question God doesn't want to answer? Is there a line? Great question. It is a good question. Mm -hmm. I think it, it boils down to what category of question it is. If it's a question about what should I do, yep. I think you keep asking it mm -hmm. until you feel led. But you, ex you accept that it may take months for that question to be answered. If it's a question where we're questioning the Bible and it, it, we're trying to get God to change the Bible, then we'd stop asking the question because he's not going to change the Bible. Yeah. If it's a question about why is this happening, I think we keep expressing it mm -hmm. until that feeling goes. And the feeling will go before we get the answer. Yep. But there may come a time with that kind of question where we begin to recognize, actually, I'm a little bit stuck mm -hmm. and I need to move on. And part of moving on is stopping asking that question. Yeah. So, for example, a big area would be bereavement, would be mm -hmm. grief, where we know there is a journey of different emotions mm -hmm. that need to be gone through. You can't go around them, and part of the healing process is to go through those things. Mm -hmm. And one of those, parts of that process is the questioning, why did this happen? Mm -hmm. Why has this person died? Mm -hmm. That is a helpful a question to ask as part of expression of our emotions for a period of time. Mm -hmm. But once we may be in months or years and we can't get beyond asking that question, mm -hmm. I think we do need to say to ourselves, this question is stopping me growing. And actually, the fact that he hasn't answered is pretty consistent with Scripture. Yep. You know, I, if I'm honest, he's not going to answer this question. Therefore, yep. I do need to move on. Yep. So it depends. Depends, I think, on which of those categories the question falls into. Mm -hmm. Some questions you keep asking, which is, what should I do? How do I do this? Where am I? What, what do I need to grow in? Have I got this right? I think those are questions we continually ask. Mm -hmm. Some questions which are expressing emotions, we need to do it, but there will come a time, normally laterally, but sometimes we have to take hold of ourselves and say, I've asked this enough mm -hmm. and I need to move forward. Mm -hmm that help? Perfect. I'm sure they will have thoroughly appreciated that answer. <laughs> we have come towards the end of our time. Do you want to just sum up for us just your top tips on asking questions? Top tips, be honest with God. Yep. Don't hold back at all. Uh, but begin to recognise what kind of question are we asking mm -hmm. and try to work out, okay, is this an answer, a question and I I'm going to get an answer to, and, and I, one area we haven't really talked about is how to look for the answers, but, but make sure mm -hmm. that, the, that if you ask a question, you're open to hear the answer, yeah. because sometimes we ask questions as an excuse, mm -hmm. and so we need to be reading scripture, mm -hmm. we need to have prayer and uh, quietness in our life to sense and feel mm -hmm an answer mm -hmm. and we need to be hearing from other people uh, so we need to make sure that we're open to answers perfect thank you ever so much for joining with us today we're going to be back next week just a reminder that on sunday we have our three live streams 8 30 10 30 6 30 do join with us there'll be things to make us smile to encourage us things to help us understand more of god and to pray together and on Monday evening, we have Cafe Church, 7 o'clock. It is a live stream. I'll be there with Hattie. And we're looking at the subject of contentment in a changing world. So do join with us then. Anyway, thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.